My name is Juliette Slot. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer of Arsenal Football Club. Uh, my name is Simon Massey-Taylor. I'm the Chief Executive of Premiership Rugby. So I'm Andrea Sapari-Martin. I'm CEO of PRS for Music. My name is Nick Robeson and I'm the Chief Executive of Boyden. Uh, Oliver Stratton. I am the CEO of Arrow Professional Services, which is a business division of Arrow Global Group. It's been wonderful to be part of the conference, um, talking about global expansion of, uh, of all businesses and how you manage that from a local business to a global business. Um, we, Arsenal, are a global football club that potentially had had a bit more of a local aspiration and now we're generally thinking about ourselves being global every day, reaching our supporters from all over the world and giving that op them that opportunity to come closer to the club. So we, we've got a big shift in our business, both in terms of how we are selling our product. We're becoming a much more consumer-facing business than relying on the rugby clubs that um, exist around the country. And so that means that we've had to shift our skill set towards um, product entertainment, direct to consumer. And so um, we spend a lot of time hiring people who are experts within entertainment, within broadcast, um, and within direct, building direct to consumer businesses that are um, have a direct relationship with the fans. Um, but also we've got a big um, shift in the way that we're governing ourselves. And so um, we're trying to recruit more independents to help with our decision making. We're trying to get uh, more of a player voice within the decision making that we're making on behalf of the league. Um, so there's another big focus on that as well. So how I feel about AI, I'm very concerned. Um, because we represent so many songwriters, 165,000 that compose, write, you know, songs, not all of them are artists. Um, on average, there's about four composers to one song, so you could imagine. And especially in the UK, the UK government currently wants to change the copyright laws that protect those rights of our members uh, to advan take advantage of um, having tech companies in the UK. And uh, so for us, it's really important uh, to make sure we protect those rights. You cannot hire without looking internationally. Um, equally, that international talent, a lot of it exists here uh, in the UK and also in, in, in Ireland. Um, but the majority of our searches have an international lens on them and, and we're fortunate enough to have you know, representation in 45 countries, so that's, uh, that, that helps. But it's, it's, yeah, it's fundamental to any uh, international or global organization. That is really a challenge actually when it comes to uh, new markets um, and that you know our markets can change the dynamics of those markets can change um, places can become more competitive less competitive and so yields can move uh, for you or against you and when you've got a uh, dispersing integrated model with you know hundreds of people on the ground, uh, sometimes that, 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 those shifts in market conditions can create a challenge. Yeah, I mean, the trick about getting good people is, is really understanding what you need, both from a sort of competence perspective, but also, you know, the softer skills, uh, you know, empathy, uh, resilience, uh, the ability, uh, cl clearly, if you look at the climate over the last three or four years, it is constant, relentless change. And so finding leaders that can adapt to that but also inspiring lead teams uh, to perform under those circumstances. It's really interesting changing the mindset. I think one of the things that we've done, we've worked on really hard internally, is to introduce a lot of our employees to what is the global Arsenal supporter, the global Guna, uh, as we call them, and uh, explaining to them that through the research we've done, that those global supporters, the relationship they want to have with the club is actually very similar around the world but we need to provide them with that opportunity through our digital outreach. And so really it's about having a culture, which is something we've, we've always um, felt we've done pretty well at, having a, a culture of uh, agility, resilience, being able to adapt to different situations, being able to put you know, helicopter in teams to, to, to deal with, with evolving markets and, and shifting uh, circumstances to take advantage of those situations. Culture is so important in change. You know, um, I've been CEO of different companies around the world, of old companies, and um, always around that old companies that have been impacted by digital change. And one of the things I learned, it's all around what I call PPE, internal people, external people, and execution. And it's so important to change 
I had to change a lot of cultures and the mindset. And it's really spending time with people, understanding where they're coming from, getting them involved, um, bringing in some new people, but then also promoting people and coaching people internally. And the culture change has to happen with all of us. There's just, there's just generally a, a spirit of, of massive change in whichever industry you're working in. Um, and so just clarity around strategy, um, a, a change of mindset in the workforce, um, but also looking after that workforce and, and making sure they don't burn out in what's going to be a pretty disruptive period that we're all going through. But exciting and, you know, I think so far, um, you know, already over the last few years, we've accumulated so much knowledge and experience from what we've had to deal with. And I think that's just going to help the economy going forward because we're going to be much more adaptable, much more entrepreneurial, um, and that can only be a positive thing.